Permutation feature importance is used to compute feature importance for any black box model. And in this video, we will discuss different approaches around how we can compute the feature importance for any variable or columns and which approach is more feasible from the practical use cases. Okay. So the first approach is very simple. So here I have defined five different steps which are required to implement approach one. So in step one, what we will do, we will train a machine learning model on the original training data set and will compute the metrics. In the second step, we'll remove one column from the original training data set and retrain the machine learning model again. And again, we'll compute the performance metrics, right? So as a part of step one, we'll get a performance metrics against the original training data set. In the second step, we'll get the performance metrics after removing that feature. Okay. And in third step, we'll simply compute the difference between the, these two matrices, right? And if there is a decrease in the performance, that means this feature is important. So that's why my performance metrics has decreased, right? So that's an indication whether that feature is important or not. In step four, we'll reward the changes, whatever we have done as a part of step two, we'll add that feature again, and then we'll go to next column. And again, we'll repeat this step from two to four. We'll repeat that step for all the feature columns. Okay, but this approach requires a retraining of an estimator for each and every feature column and which can be computationally intensive and may not be feasible for many of the practical use cases. Okay, so now we'll see approach number two, which is more feasible. And in this notebook, we'll see how we can use the approach number two to find out the permutation feature importance for any column. So the logic is very simple. In step number one, we will train a machine learning model based on training data. In step number two, so instead of removing that feature column entirely from the data, what we will do, we will shuffle the value of that feature column. But that, that shuffling should only happen against the testing data set, not against the training data set. So this is key. Right? So this step is very important. In third step, we will use the machine learning model from step number one and we'll make a prediction against shuffle data and against the original test data, right? And in fourth step, we will compare the prediction made against the shuffle data and original data. If the performance against shuffle data has decreased, that means that feature is important. And we have seen the performance deterioration due to shuffling of that feature column. And in, in step five, we'll simply revert the changes made to step number two and we'll perform the same activity for other feature columns, right? So in step six, it's saying that repeat step two to step five for all the other feature columns. So that's the basic concept. And here I have just shown an example. So take an example of age. And if we need to find out the feature importance of age variable, so what we will do? We will simply shuffle the value of that age column and we'll make a prediction against this shuffle data. And if that feature is important, right, then my performance will decrease, right? Because in, in the shuffle data, we haven't provided the correct representation of age column, right? And, and my machine learning model would not be able to find out any valuable relationship with age column and my performance will decrease, right? So in this way, permutation feature importance compute the feature importance for all the columns, right? So we will perform similar activity for all feature columns and it will provide the importance of that variable, okay? So as someone can ask why it's important because we random forest also provide the feature importance, right? And here also we are computing the feature importance. But here the one thing is important. 
random forest is based on a mean decrease in impurity right because if you look the random forest criteria it calculate the feature importance and split the nodes based on guinea and entropy for the classification problem and for regression problem it used mean squared error right so that's not a clear linkage with my performance metrics and here we are computing feature importance based on my performance metrics so whatever performance metrics we have decided will compute the feature importance based on that so that would be the actual representation of your feature feature importance which you are going to use we'll see that in our example okay so i am simply importing some important packages so this is for data analysis and i am using a scikit learn and for permutation feature importance i am importing eli pipe package it's it's a very handy package and it provides lots of different sort of model interpretation technique and in this video we would be using simply permutation feature importance and then we have some library for plotting so we'll simply run it okay and i am using early stage diabetic risk prediction data set from kaggle so you can simply go and download the data set and i am loading it so it can be it, it, it's a very small data set 520 samples and 17 features okay that is done and now we'll prepare the data so here what i am doing i am simply excluding the target column which is class so you can see it my target column is class so i have excluded that from my feature column because i don't need to include the target column in my model training and here i am simply mapping it to for negative i am mapping it to zero mapping one for positive so my target column has been properly encoded for my model training and in the next few step i am just finding out numerical column i am finding out categorical column with the help of this select d type right so based on your data requirements you can simply include or exclude appropriate feature appropriate data type right so here i am including int 64 and float 64 for numeric column representation and similarly for categorical column i have included objects and while cal calculating the numerical features i need to exclude the target column right and that's what i have done as a part of these two steps right so once we'll have numerical features and categorical features we'll simply add it to compute the final training features and we'll select the training data based on that feature value i mean, I mean that's what i have done here the next step we need to create training and validation data set separately so that's what i have done here and in next step we need to encode all the categorical columns right because in the data set we have many more categorical columns so we need to encode it for that i have used label encoder right that's what i have done here so we'll simply run it so after this step my data is ready for modeling right so here i am using random forest simple random forest classifier with max step at 4 and number of estimated i have defined at 300 right here i am training it i am fitting it against the training data set okay and i have created one feature importance data frame and in that data frame i am storing all the features and in the importance column i am storing the feature importance for individual columns that's what we have done as a part of this step random forest and the purpose of storing the feature importance for random forest is to just showcase how it differs when we perform a permutation feature importance for that column so that is done and in next step we'll run this permutation feature importance and we'll pass the classifier which we have just trained so this one so this is this step one we which we have talked about so this step we have trained model and we will be passing this trained model for calculating our performance metrics against the test data set test data set and shuffle data set right so that's what we are doing it here we are 
passing the model which we have trained against the training data set we are telling that perform the permutation feature importance based on roc aoc metrics right and we are fitting it with the help of validation data set right once we'll train it it will provide the feature importance for all the columns and that's what we have done here we have simply defined one permutation importance data frame and we, we are storing features and permutation feature importance value right and here we are simply calculating the matrix against my validation data so we'll simply run it and now you can see the performance matrix is 99.31 AUC okay so now let's compare the feature importance done by random forest and feature importance provided by permutation feature importance okay so here i'm simply taking the feature importance data frame which we have calculated here right and i am simply plotting the feature importance based on feature values right so here you can see the feature importance for random forest and at the bottom i am plotting feature importance based on permutation feature value right which we have completed here so i'm taking that data frame and i'm plotting this bar chart okay and if we compare the feature importance provided by both of these approaches you can see that the initial three columns are exactly similar so right so that means both of the approaches are able to find out the important features but if you look the other feature values the ordering is completely different right so take an example of obesity you can see that um, uh, random forest has computed that feature as a low priority this feature is not important from random forest feature importance perspective but in the permutation feature importance when we have computed the feature importance based on the performance metrics the obesity feature is much more important right so in this way you can see the deviation and differences between these two approaches and that's why using random forest as a base to understand the importance of your feature values is not the correct approach right and, and probably we need to follow different sort of technique and approaches for finding out which features are more important for my training data then probably you need to apply permutation feature importance or we have many more methods through which we can compute the global feature importance value okay the other thing which is important to understand is the deviation of the performance metrics between different run of that permutation feature operation right so if you look the permutation feature importance function then probably you would be able to make out what it means right so we'll simply take that value and we'll try to understand what parameters it takes so here you can see that it by default it takes in iteration as five so what it means that it will perform shuffling operation five times for every column and during every shuffling there would be some deviation in the performance matrix and that's what it it represents plus minus 0 0.0351 right so that's the main value that after shuffling of that feature value my performance matrix will decrease 0 0.0542 and it will have a deviation between a, every shuffling operation it will vary by this this much amount right so that's the meaning of the, these two terms and you can see that we we also have some negative values so like these three columns we have negative values so which indicates that after shuffling the value of these three columns the performance matrix has increased or it has no impact so that means these features are not important from model training perspective right i mean that's the interpretation of these values right so based on my feature importance we can clearly say that these three 
features are more important and other features have some different priority as compared to random forest right but will take permutation feature importance as a base for comparing the importance of variables because it has been calculated based on my scoring matrix and in this case my scoring matrix is ROC AOC okay so that's it for now thanks for watching it